Okay, Aww. so here's the idea. On the first problem here, uh, what we talked about, what we started with at the beginning of the year was factoring. Now I had to pull numbers apart, uh, basically looking at the types of numbers was the next section, and then um, after that we started talking about adding and subtracting and um, doing all the basic things with numbers. So the big thing is, let's start with factors. Uh, there's two types of factoring. Um, the big thing I want to make sure of is that when you look at a problem, you know what factors mean. So I'm going to start with the number 12 here. I'm just going to start with something easy. Factors are when you pull numbers apart and you're looking at two numbers that obviously multiply together to give you 12. So one of the first ones you should always list is 1 and 12. Those are factors. Those multiply together to give me 12. Now, obviously, yeah, obviously this is an even number, so Bring 2 will run to it, so 2 and 6. Bring so four. how I get 2 and 6, it's always half. So half, is, uh, <coughs> half of 12 is 6, so 2 and 6. And then I heard the last one was what, 3 and 4? Did you do like 24 divided by 2? No, uh, only numbers that multiply. Factors are only numbers that multiply. I, I understand like, you can do division, mm -hmm. but we, factors are only numbers that multiply. Right. So, and no decimals. They've got to be nice, clean, natural numbers. Okay, so those are factors. That was the very first section we did. Now, what that eventually molded into was we did different styles of factoring. Uh, we did prime factorization of things. This is the one I want you to know for sure. Like you know how to do that one where you can list off all the different numbers that multiply. Now, obviously, if you have a multiplication chart, you can just look at the chart and figure out most of the numbers. But then we went into GCF. This is always one of the questions we always had where I list off two different numbers. So let's say in 12 and 20. And you're trying to pick out the biggest number that they both have. The largest number. Four. So, yeah, so let's let's look at that. I think it is 4. So, the idea is for 12, I just list them off. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. For 20, well, obviously you have 1 and 20. 4 and 5. 4 and 5, 2 and 10. So we have a couple different options. I think that's about it for 20. I don't think there's any other options than that. And then, then you're looking for the biggest number that is 4 and 10. So this would be the greatest common factor is 4. Okay, that's, that's GCF. It's the greatest number that's in both lists. Now, here's the problem. To get that right, you have to be able to list every number. So whatever the numbers are, big, small, you have to list off as many as possible and then just pick one that you know matches. So if you know you're not going to get all the numbers listed, right? Maybe you didn't know, maybe you didn't know that 2 and 10 went into 20, but you knew 4 and 5. Well, when you compare both lists, you can at least circle the ones that you notice that are matching. Because you might get right. You might actually nail the number that they actually have in common. Maybe there's a bigger one later, but you at least found the first one. That you can <coughs> now, obviously, they have twos and ones, but I'm looking for the biggest or greatest common factor. Okay, questions with the first sets. Okay, now, the next type. Um, this next one was based on, um, based on naturals, holes. It was like looking at a number and classifying by what type it was. This was that next section that we did. So if I gave you a number like, uh, let's go with negative 3.6. Most people's instinct, when you look at like the types of numbers, okay, I'm gonna list them. <coughs> natural, whole, integer, uh, rational, and irrational. These are the different types. And you have to figure out which ones or ones does, does, does it apply to that group. A particular problem. Now, since it's negative, it can't be these two. Natural and whole are just clean, positive numbers. No decimals, nothing. So that I already threw up. It can't be an integer. I know integers can be negative, but they can't be decimals. So it's down to the bottom two. Um, and it's going to be rational. This is the one that it is. It's only one set. It's a rational number. Number one, y, it's negative, so it couldn't be the top two. But it was a decimal, so it's automatically rational or irrational, and it ended. It definitely terminated. It ended at the end, so that's rational. If I had a dot, dot, dot here, that would be irrational. That's pretty much the only thing I look for for irrational is the dot, dot, dot kind of thing. Um, now, if this number was not a decimal, it was just 36, now it's going to be both of these. Because integers can be negatives, they can be nice clean numbers, but no decimals. And it can be irrational because I can make that a fraction. So every, basically every type of number that you can make a fraction, you can make it as irrational because I can make this over one, and that's a that's a rational number. Questions with the different sets. Natural and whole are almost the exact same set. The only difference between natural and whole, whole has a zero, and how I remember that, 
um, the letter O in whole looks like zero. That's how I remember it. So it goes zero, one, and keep going. That's how I remember. And natural, you only have the number one. That's just how I, that's how I think of it. One, two, three. It's kind of a weird way to do it, but I use the, the symbols themselves, like actual letters, to help me remember the order that it goes in. But those are, that was the next set that we've done. So it's listing off different classifications. Now, okay? Now, the next set that we have, okay? The next set is, um, is going looking at the integers and whole numbers and whatnot, but you put them on a number line. So one of the one of the types of numbers we talked about was when they give you two numbers and they want to know what what's the symbol you put between. Is it greater? Is it less? You know, is it equal to? No, I didn't put those in order. But remember how this works. Um, the mouth, like the little alligator mouth or Pac-Man, however you want to think of it, the, the actual open end here wants to face the bigger number. The pointy end, the smaller end, faces the smaller number. So if I told you negative 12 and negative 8, they're both negative numbers. But how do we know which one's bigger? Maybe. Yeah, how do we know that? Because it's closer to a positive. Yeah, it's closer to a positive. So if you think about a number line, you're absolutely right. When you think about a number line, negative 12, negative 11, negative 10, negative 8, or negative nine, negative eight, uh, negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four. Uh, it's getting closer and closer to zero and the positive numbers. So this is technically a bigger number. As you go this way in a number line, the numbers get bigger. Even though I know that seems really goofy, they are getting bigger as you go. So the negative eight is a larger number. So this is what I have. The mouth faces the bigger number. Okay, the smaller end is the smaller number. Now, if I put absolute values here, now the 12 is bigger. Because absolute value literally means positive numbers. So now this is the bigger number. So now you'd have to have the mouth face the other number. So be careful. That was some of the numbers we've done. Um, we did absolute value. Absolute value just changes numbers to positive. That's all it does. All right. Questions at all about the first three set or th the first three sections? Perfect. Then we started talking about adding and subtracting negatives. That was the last one. This is our last one today. Adding and subtracting, when you look at a number, you just have to first <coughs> simplify the problem if need be. So this is my last problem of the day, by the way. So, last problem. So, if I had negative 12 minus a negative 28, okay? Let's say that was a problem. I believe I usually have both parentheses around here. So this is the last type of problem. We'll do more of these on Monday. But here's the idea. When I first look at it, the first thing I should do is cancel out the double negative in the middle. Okay, so double negative. So boom, here, here we go. Cancel out double negative. Okay? And now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, since I've canceled out the double negative in the middle, this is now negative 12 plus 28. Now the next thing I'm going to check, are these the same type of number? No. They're not. Like one's positive, one's a negative number, right? Because it's a positive 28, it's a negative 12. So now that I've noticed that after I've simplified this, since they're different, you're going to subtract them. And I don't care how you write it, just subtract them. I always put the bigger number on the top. You only subtract them when they're different signs. If they're the same sign, if they're both negative numbers, you just add them together. That's just how I always think of it. So I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to subtract, I get what, 16? Now, if it's positive or negative, that's the next thing I have to think about. Because I know they were different, so I had to subtract them, that's why I did this. But which number is the bigger number? 28. 28. It's a positive number, right? So my answer is positive. That's just how I think of it. It's, it's just the first second I look, is it, do I need to add or subtract the numbers? That comes down to, are they the same type of number or are they opposites? These are opposites. One's positive and one's negative. So then I automatically subtract if they're opposites. All right, questions? All right, that's it for today. We have, uh, we're done. I'll give you a pass. You can go get your sweatshirt. Um, and um, on Monday, on Monday we will uh, we will continue on and do the review.
I I was was drinking coffee. That was the dumbest show. Turn up with us. What would it be? Annoying. Oh, I can look at another question. I remember what it was like on Cartoon Network. That's what I was on. Who would dress up as? But no, it's definitely good. Like you're a pro? Why do you wear your car on? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that show. I used to watch it all the time. Just get all the ballots, enter in all the scores. Mr. Ward, you ever watch the show? Walk down to the, walk down to the gym.